Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch. Welcome to another episode in the Game Developer's Toolbox. Uh, today we're looking at something that if you are a, a Windows-based developer, you probably are already very familiar with, and if you are not working on Windows, you are probably secretly jealous of, and that is Visual Studio. Now, Visual Studio is a collection of, uh, it's an IDE and a collection of programming languages that has been around for a very long time, uh, since the early 90s, basically. Uh, it was an amalgam of uh, Visual Basic 3, Visual C++ at the time, Fox Pro, and a couple of other programming languages. They brought all together under one interface, and that gave us Visual Studio 4. Uh, 4 was followed by, I believe, a 5. I'm not positive on that one. Definitely a 6. Then uh, 97, 2000, 2013, and now we have 2015. And I'm missing a few. Oh, yeah, and the .NET was thrown in there somewhere as well. So we've had a number of revisions of this, but basically it's an amalgam of all the programming technologies from Microsoft in one handy place. And on top of that, they have built in server browsers, database access tools, profilers, a great debugger, uh, integrated help system, etc. It is pretty much the gold standard of IDEs or integrated development environments. Now, at the same time, over that period of time, it has also gotten a little slower, a little bit more bloated, a little bit more full in the menus. It's probably kind of getting creaky at the seams and due for a rewrite sometime in the future. And not to be confused with Visual Studio, um, they've also brought out Visual Studio Code, uh, which is a cross-platform lightweight editor, but that's built on the Atom uh, platform. It's a completely separate thing, so don't mix those two up. Visual Studio is, and here's the number one problem, it's Windows only. You can run it on Mac under Parallels. You might be able to run it under Wine on Linux. I'm not entirely certain, but it is very much started life as a Windows IDE for Windows development. Now that last part has changed a bit. You can actually do cross-platform development using Visual Studio. Um, you can integrate Xamarin right in, so you can do iOS and Android builds. Uh, you can even link into um, external debuggers now, such as GDB, it can be hooked into it. And on top of it, and why it's incredibly relevant to game developers is it is integrated into the majority of game engine workflows. So um, Unreal Engine and Unity, for example, both have tight Visual Studio integration. So it's a big player in the game space. In fact, a lot of people that are working on a platform specific version, for example, um, I believe The Last of Us, which is a Sony only development, they use Visual Studio as their IDE, even though they're not even making a Windows title. It is a productive environment um, but it is also a little daunting one. So if you're the type that likes Notepad and the command line, you're never going to be convinced that Visual Studio is the place for you. Now, here it is in action. This is running a C++ project, and the editor is probably what sucks people in. And where they really pioneer development, I think this was them, I don't believe anyone else started this, is IntelliSense. So this pop-up of what you can do, code completion, it's everywhere now. But this is probably implemented best in Visual Studio, and it's kind of a lifesaver once you've become dependent. You, like, I can't live without IntelliSense now. Fortunately, it is now available in almost the entirety of the world. Now, another area where Visual Studio really shines, and when I go to another um, C++ environment, for example, <coughs> Xcode, <coughs> um, or any other really different IDE, what I miss is the debugger. Uh, Visual Studio's debugger is seamless, uh, it's in depth, it works well, it has all of the settings you want. The nice thing is it's even got remote debugging, so if you need to debug on a different machine so you're not taking the, the debug hit from the debugger running in the background, uh, you simply set your breakpoints, you can hover over, uh, see the value of anything, you can expand down, drill in, uh, you have your autos, you have watch points, breakpoints, all the things you expect in a debugger are here. You've got raw memory views, uh, conditional breakpoints, every single thing that you probably want in a developer is here in this language developer. Now the nice thing is you're seeing C++ here, but there's also in Visual Studio support for C Sharp, Visual Basic, F Sharp, uh, C++, Python or Iron Python, uh, Node, um, TypeScript and HTML and JavaScript, all out of the box. So all of those languages have debugging abilities. All of them have code completion. It's great in that manner. Uh, on top of that, you have handy things in here. You have um, Team Explorer for integrating into, for example, remote Git repositories or an easier hub uh, or any other online service that integrates in Visual Studio. Uh, you have Class Viewer for drilling down into the methods and such available in your class. Um, 
if you get back into more of the .NET side, you have um, integrated form builders and stuff for rapidly creating user interfaces. That's actually why the visual in Visual Studio comes in. It goes back to Visual Basic, where you could literally drag and drop and create a programmable interface. Well, that's all still here. It's, it's used less commonly these days, but definitely uh, WinForm applications, even uh, Manage C++ applications, you can do your GUI still quite visibly. And there is still Visual Basic out there, although it's really just C Sharp in a VB dress. But as it stands, there still is that visual from Visual Studio available. So that form creation, if you wish, uh, for rapidly creating UIs. There is a reason why uh, C Sharp is one of the biggest tools for to uh, for creating um, game development tools, and that WinForm integration is definitely a big part of that. Now, another nice part here is there is nice integration. I mentioned earlier that you can add um, plugins for Unity or uh, uh, Unreal Engine and integrate your code back and forth. But you can also do a number of plugins. You can have linter plugins in there, um, code reformatting, uh, and various other things. For example, right now in front of you, I have the productivity tools in here. So I am using it so that you can quickly see my text while using a video. Oops, I want to turn that off. Like so. So that's a plugin that's integrated in there, tightly integrated. And then there's another things like uh, ReSharper, which is a refactoring tool, very, very popular. And probably if compared to other modern IDEs, especially IDEs from uh, NetBrains, like the IntelliJ series or C-Lion, et cetera, where Visual Studio could definitely use some improvement is its refactoring. Code refactoring tools are not as great as they could be, but they're definitely quite good. Then there's, um, there's integrated uh, model viewers, there's profilers for your code optimization, there are, there's so many tools tucked in behind there. There's even a 2D image editor or an icon editor tucked in here. So there is a ton of tooling in here. There's features in here for internationalization, string tables, etc. So Visual Studio, probably as well as any IDE out there, brings together all of the tools you need in one place in a package that performs generally good enough. Like I said, it's starting to get a little creaky. Uh, probably due for a rewrite soon, uh, but still on modern hardware, Visual Studio is still a reasonably well-performing application. Now, where it's directly relevant, especially to indie developers right now, is the price. See, I grew up with Visual Studio, and I remember back in the day, Visual Studio 4, those kind of days, up through um, about to 2010, maybe 2013, Visual Studio cost almost a grand or you bought it with MSDN. I remember in previous company I worked for, we all had licenses of MSDN for $4,700 a shot. Um, that's all changed. Back in 2010, they started releasing the Express versions to go along with Microsoft XNA. And Express was a stripped down version of each thing. So it took out all these various tools and focused on the language. So you had Visual C++ Express, you had Visual Basic Express, Visual Web Developer Express, etc. And they were stripped down to do just that area and they removed a lot of really handy stuff such as extensibility. So people couldn't do plugins, etc. So if you worked with Unity back in the day, you needed to have a non-Express version. So you were looking at $1,000 to work in this environment, which was pretty painful. And then what they did last year is they released the Community Edition. Now, Community Edition is nice because it is what we call free. Um, if you are with a company with five or less developers and you make something like less than a million dollars, you you get the full version of Visual Studio free. So that part is definitely nice. I think it's missing a couple of like the high-end team integration stuff, which you're only going to need if you've got a large team, in which case you wouldn't qualify for it anyways. So Visual Studio Community really kind of changed the status quo. Unlike Express, it's not stripped down and it's not ruined in any way. It's the full thing minus a couple of real high-end features. Uh, so that part is definitely nice. And then what they just did, um, I'm recording this right now in November. So it was earlier this month at the Microsoft, oh, I forget what the hell they call it, Visual Studio Connect or something like that conference. They just released, and you might've saw it in the background earlier, Visual Studio Dev Essentials. Um, and this is important for a couple of reasons, especially to game developers. Um, Visual Studio Dev Essentials is basically 
Uh, let me just see if I can bring this up. It is a bundling of existing stuff. So there's no, it's not a new product. It's nothing really magical. Basically what they did is they brought Visual Studio Community, which I just finished talking about, which is basically Visual Studio free edition for developers five or under. Uh, Visual Studio Code, which is that stripped down Atom-based cross-platform code editor, mostly for our um, C-sharp JavaScript or TypeScript editing. Uh, Visual Studio Express, which as far as I can tell, has absolutely no reason to exist anymore. And Team Foundation Server Express, which I actually haven't looked into, but ironically, Team Foundation Server is kind of the stuff that was originally stripped out of Visual Studio Community. But I don't know what this Express means, so I'm not going to talk about that part specifically. So basically, they took all of the tools they had existing and brought them together under this uh, free Visual Studio Dev Essentials program. Now, you do need to give them a login. Um, so you need to have, I think you need to have an Outlook or Hotmail authentication with them to qualify, but that's it. That's really the only requirement. They don't spam you or anything like that. Now, where it gets cool is the other stuff that they're bundling with it. Uh, right here is Azure Credits. Azure is their cloud hosting, like Amazon EC2. For $25 a month for 12 months, that gives you the ability to run two servers completely free in the cloud for a year. So if you've got servers for your game or you need for testing purposes or whatever, this is one year's worth of it for free. So that's kind of cool. That's actually very cool. Uh, the rest of this is kind of fluffish uh, or not relevant mostly to game developers. Now what you do get where it's relevant again, if you're on Mac, they've also done this and they've brought in Parallels Desktop, which Parallels is a piece of software for Macintosh that enables you to run Windows. Well, you can get three months of the pro version for free now with this. Uh, Parallel Access, I'm not entirely certain what that is, but it's the same uh, program so it's basically around running Windows on uh, a Mac, a Windows platform VM. So basically an operating system to run, uh, coming soon, and then uh, access to the online office apps. So if you're on a Mac or in the Mac ecosystem, they're trying to kind of reach out to you through Parallels. Not the best option in the world, but three months free development time is kind of a nice little perk. Now what's really kind of cool is this guy, and especially this one right here and I just discovered why uh, like a day or two ago um, and Pluralsight is offering six months of developer training now Pluralsight has been doing uh, code based training for years and years and years and years like at least a decade probably longer now where it's relevant to game developers though is Pluralsight, uh, Pluralsight sorry, recently purchased Digital Tutors Digital Tutors is this guy now Digital Tutors are specifically training for um, game engines and CG applications, game dev. Uh, so your programs are stuff like, well, here we go. Let me bring that back up. 3ds Max, Blender, CryEngine, uh, Maya, Moto, um, Soft Image, Substance Designer, Substance Painter, UDK, Unity, Unreal Engine, etc. So you can come in here if you do need specific training, which per se maybe Game from Scratch doesn't provide yet. Uh, anyways, Pluralsight slash Digital Tutors has a huge number of game de development specific courses. So what you might look at as being a very fluff offering here, this six month subscription free, isn't. There are a lot of very relevant, very cool game dev related programs in here. So if you are a game developer, this is six months of access to some fairly high-end game development related tutorials. So I definitely recommend you check that out. And the nice part is when you do sign up, it automatically sets you for not rebilling and it never once asks you for a credit card. So really there is no risk involved in this one. Uh, so I highly recommend if you are a game developer, especially working on the Windows platform, or even if you're not and you just want access to that training, sign up. Sign up for Digital Duty of Dev Extensions. Get your six months plural site. Go check out the Digital Tutor stuff. It is well worth it. But regardless of all of that, maybe a controversial statement to say, even with all of its flaws, even with all of Windows flaws, with everything else that's out there, Visual Studio 2015 is still by far and away the best IDE available. It's better than Eclipse. It's better than IntelliJ, it's better than Android Studio, which is officially actually IntelliJ, it's better than Qt Creator, it's better by 100 million miles than Xcode. It is your best IDE option, period. And when I leave Windows, there is nothing I miss more than Visual Studio. Now the kicker is, 
I'm not liking Visual Studio 2015 as much as 2013. It seems to be a bit of a step backwards, and there is probably going to be a rebuild at some point in the future. But as it stands now, in the world we live today, Visual Studio 2015 is probably the single best IDE you will find. So if you're a game developer, especially a game developer working on Windows, but even less, less so these days, to be honest, Visual Studio 2015 is definitely something you should check out, as is Visual Studio Debbie Central's for that plural site training. So I hope you enjoyed that. See you later. Bye.